Today we are going to discuss how to auto mount NFS on OpenShift. Hey what's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aleš Nosek and I'm the software practitioner located in San Diego, California, helping you navigate the world of Kubernetes. Recently I was working on a proof of concept that uses Linux AutoMounter to mount NFS volumes into containers on OpenShift. If you are migrating applications from an existing Linux environment where the applications were used to access their data on NFS volumes which were auto-mounted, then this video might be interesting for you. Let's review the deployment diagram first. In this diagram I am showing you three OpenShift worker nodes. One thing to note about them is that they are running an operating system called Red Hat CoreOS. And this operating system was specifically designed for running containers. Unfortunately, Red Hat CoreOS doesn't allow you to install applications using RPM. So how can you install AutoMounter on each of your OpenShift nodes? Well, uh, what you need to do is you need to create a container image with the AutoMounter inside. And then you can run that image as a container on top of the OpenShift nodes. To ensure that there is one instance of the AutoMounter running on each of your OpenShift nodes, you can use the DemonSet object in Kubernetes. DemonSet will make sure that one instance of AutoMounter pod is scheduled on each of your OpenShift nodes. So the next problem to solve is how to make the NFS shares mounted by the AutoMounter, how to make those shares accessible to any application pod running on the given OpenShift node. To achieve that, we are actually going to mount the NFS shares directly onto the file system of the OpenShift node. And for that, we will need to give the AutoMount container here access to that, no to that node's file system. And that can be achieved by creating a host path volume. And that volume will then expose the node's file system into the AutoMounter. And on that file system then, AutoMounter will, will be mounting the NFS shares. So now that we have the NFS shares mounted onto the file system of the OpenShift node, how can we make those shares accessible to the application containers? Well, uh, we are going to leverage the same approach as with the AutoMounter. We are going to mount a part of the node's file system where those NFS shares are. We are going to mount that one as a host path volume into the application pods. And so now the application pods uh, can find the NFS shares and access them directly in the container. And the last component in this diagram I wanted to talk about is the NFS server. For the sake of proof of concept, I'm running this NFS server containerized directly on OpenShift. However, the idea is that you can bring your own NFS server, which is even maybe running somewhere externally. This diagram is showing the detail of the worker node, including the two pods running on top of it, the auto mount pod and the test pod. And also here it is depicted how the host path volumes work. So the host path volume, which is attached to the auto mount pod is mounting the var mount directory from the worker node into the container onto the mount point slash mount. In a similar way, uh, a host path volume which is attached to the test pod is also mounting the var mount directory from the worker node into the test pod container onto the mount point slash mount as well. The next question is, what happens when a container mounts an additional file system under the already mounted subtree? So for example, when the auto mount container mounts a NFS share below the slash mount subtree here. And the answer to that is that by default, the, the mounts are not propagated between the subtrees. That means that when the auto mounter would mount an NFS share here, it would not be visible on the on the worker node file system at all. So that would not work for our use case. Instead of leveraging the default values when creating the host path volumes, we inst instead need to set the 
mount propagation parameter to allow the propagation of the mounts between our subtrees here. So in order to get the mounts, those NFS mounts from the auto mount container propagated into the worker node subtree, we will set the mount propagation parameter to bidirectional. On the other hand, in order to make the, the mounts which are visible on the worker node subtree, in order to make them visible in the test application pod here, we can leverage the mount propagation host to container. So that will cause any mounts from worker node to be visible in the test pod. However, any additional mounts which the test pod would create itself, those won't be propagated back uh, to the node. And that's also what we want. More information on the mount propagation parameter can be found in the Kubernetes documentation. And also there is a great blog post by Siddhartha Mani, uh, which also discusses uh, the Kubernetes mount propagation in a great detail. Um, I will post the, the links uh, for both of these sources down below the video. And finally, the source code for the OpenShift AutoMount NFS POC is available on GitHub. And in the next section, we are going to walk through the code. First, let's take a look at the AutoMount daemon set. So you can see here that the daemon set needs to run as privileged. And there are several volumes which we are mounting to the AutoMount pods. Those are mostly config maps bringing the configuration to the auto, for the auto mounter. Also though, we are mounting here the host path and that one needs to be mounted as uh, bidirectional with the mount propagation bidirectional as I said before. Otherwise the NFS shares mounted by the auto mounter would not be visible on the subtree on the OpenShift node. The next thing I learned about AutoMounter is that it doesn't like to run in its own pit namespace, so I have to uh, set the host pit to true here. And also uh, for the NFS client processes, I'm leveraging the NFS client daemons which are already running on each of the OpenShift nodes. They are there already from the installation of OpenShift. And so in order to be able to reach out to them, I have to run the auto mounter using the host network set to true. It means I'm not going to create a separate network namespace for the auto mounter that would not allow me to reach out to NFS demons on the local host interface here. Next, let's take a look at the test pod application. So this is the application which will try to access the NFS shares. And in the case that they are not mounted yet, the auto mounter will mount them automatically so that the application can read the data from that share. And the test pod application is just one pod uh, running on OpenShift node. And this pod is um, uh, having a host path volume attached. So that's the volume which is mounting the directory from the OpenShift node where the NFS shares are located into the into the, into the container. And uh, as we discussed before, the mount propagation is set to host to container, which is for this uh, case fully sufficient. It means that the NFS shares will be visible in this pod. However, if this pod or container would be creating additional mounts, those would not be propagated back to the node. So with the restricted, uh, SCCs on OpenShift, uh, applications are not able to attach host path volumes. So I have to create, I had to create my own SCC, which is uh, very much the restricted SCC with the exception of enabling the host path functionality. So I had to allow hosted volume plugin here. And I also added the host path volumes into the list of allowed volumes. So with that, I get still for my application the most restrictive settings regarding security settings. However, the application will still be able to, using the host path, access the NFS shares uh, on the underlying node. Finally, in this section, I would like to show you a demo of my POC. 
So I have the the POC Git repository checked out here on my desktop. And uh, first, let's create the namespace where everything else will be deployed. So after that, we are going to deploy the NFS server because I don't really have any NFS server available. So I will deploy my right now NFS server. So I will take a look at uh, what IP address the NFS server will get. So that's the 172.30.57.59. So this IP address needs to be known to the auto mounter so that it knows where to mount the NFS shares from. And so in the auto mounter configuration, I think it is under extras NFS. Okay, I will put the NFS IP there. Delete this, save it. All right, with that, I can now deploy the auto mounter. So OC apply, dash K auto mount. So the auto mounter is a daemon set. Uh, this OpenShift cluster is a free node cluster. So you can see that there are three instances of auto mount running. So one instance per node. And so next I can now uh, exercise the, the deployment using my test pod. So for that, I will OC apply the K my test pod. And then I will just let the logs of all the containers in the current namespace roll over my screen. Um, now, note that the, the auto mount container uh, is still going to install RPMs during the startup of the container. So you will need to give it enough time for the container to fully come up. And the test pod container uh, in its initialization script, it will try immediately to, uh, to access the Dallas NFS share. So you can see it in the output here that it actually succeeded. So this is the auto mounter, which was able to see the request to mount the Dallas share. Um, you can see that the auto mounter created the, the directory um, and then it actually called the mount command uh, to mount the NFS share. Uh, so you can see that the, the test pod now is able to uh, access the Dallas NFS share on its uh, own subtree. So I'm also now going to RSH into the, into the test pod. Uh, so RSH, my test pod. and uh, the mounts are under mount and you can see that i will not be able to list the directory even when i'm able to go into it and that's because uh, of se linux which is activated there and uh, the directories are labeled so that i'm not able to list them as a unprivileged user here with a container label but I'm at least able to change into them. So if I know that there is the directory auto mount, then I can just go there. And then again, I'm not able to list. However, I know that there is the, the mounted share, Dallas. So now you can see that this is my, my share here mounted. Um, I can actually list all the, all the mounts which were, which were created in this uh, container. It's quite a bit, but at the bottom, you can actually see the the auto mount, uh, auto FS uh, point. And then you can see the Dallas, which is the NFS mount. And if I would like to go to a different NFS share, which is not mounted there yet, uh, I know that another NFS share is the uh, Tucson. So I can just go to Tucson. And you can see it takes a while to mount it. But uh, now I am there, Tucson share and i also can again list the mounts uh, find mount and you can see that the the tucson is mounted uh, just now one thing which still doesn't work for me in this uh, poc is that after some time of inactivity i think it's 10 minutes the mounted nfs shares should be automatically unmounted by the auto mounter however i didn't see that happening 
Um, I think there is still something which needs to be fixed, uh, but I don't know at the moment why it doesn't work. However, uh, for our use case, uh, it's not really a problem when those, uh, when those NFS shares are just staying there are, and are not unmounted. So what did we accomplish today? Well, we reviewed the deployment of a Linux auto-mounter onto OpenShift. We talked about the mount propagation and the settings for bidirectional propagation or the host to container mount propagation. Uh, I walked you through the code of my POC of how to make the auto-mounted NFS shares accessible to the OpenShift pods. And at the end, I also show you a demo of how that POC works. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please feel free to leave your questions or comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing so that you are notified whenever I release a new video. Until next time.